Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Gio from Smart Home Makers and today we've got a new member of my smart home from Ecomacs, the D-Bot Omni X1. As you can see from over here, this robot vacuum comes in two pieces. Stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to show you how you can integrate this D-Bot into Home Assistant and then use it in Node-RED. What makes the D-Bot Omni XY special is the station itself. Here we've got clean water. So if I lift this up, you can see it's pretty much run out. And when it does run out, it will actually notify you and tell you. So you can use this inlet, put some fresh water in here for the mopping function and slot it in. On the other side, you also get some dirty water. You can see how properly dirty that is. So this is sort of halfway through. And we have some uh, unit here for additional mops. And this is actually a brush over here. In the compartment here down below is where you've got all the dust collecting. So I haven't actually opened this yet. I just want to show you the seal because this actually stores up to like 60 days worth of uh, vacuuming. Until this prompts me, I'm not going to pull it out. The unit itself, you can see it over here, is actually a design I worked on. It's called Jacob Jensen Design. And this works in a similar way to the other models, but it also has the mops integrated. So if I, let me just show you quickly. So this sort of pops up like this and you have a tray that you can actually uh, use over here. So you can see this pretty much empty. The auto dusting function basically will suck it all up and put it over here. You have your on and off and your Wi-Fi pairing button. You've got your QR code for setup. You've got a simple button that you can press to start and go. So let's flip it around. You can see that this unit gets some proper use as there's some dust on it. The mopping pads that you can attach, you simply attach them and detach them uh, like this. And the great thing with the unit itself is that it does auto mopping. So auto mopping will basically clean this out itself. Uh, so you really don't need to worry about cleaning these on. And it will also do hot drying with some keep them bacteria free. You can also do some maintenance over here by opening these two little ports and you can take some hair or anything that accumulates. On the front, you can see there's actually a little camera. This is the AIVI 3D. And basically what this does, it creates a map thanks to this device on top here. And it also improves object detection. Now I'm going to press the recall button over here. Return to the station. So it docks backwards. Right, so now they're all docked and it will automatically charge. The battery of this device is 5,200 milliampere, so you've got plenty. This actual unit shuts like this, so it stays all flush. It does take up quite a lot of space in your room, so you're going to have to be careful of that. As you can see from over here, this was the screen for my existing D-Bot. This is the D-Bot Omni. You can notice there's this little device over here. This is the voice assistant called Yiko. And this Yiko basically gives uh, many more options. I actually put a, a sort of graphic list over here with what you can actually do with Yiko compared to if you integrate it with Amazon's or Google's one. So it's actually a value added device that you can actually control it through voice. So if you scroll up from the bottom, you can see the cleaning cycles, vacuum power and water level that you want to set up. I've set the water level to high anyway because it's like four liter tank. So I don't care if how much water it actually uses, but be aware that it might leave the uh, floor slippery if it's winter. It also does a map exactly as the other models, but this uh, also has a 3D map. So tap on the 3D house map and it will automatically give you a representation of uh, where things are. If you look at the screen over here, you can actually see the position of the D-Bot, sort of position it close to a door. And if I just move this around, you can see there's a door here and you can also see the TV, which is over here, and you can see the unit over there. The video is also something that might spook you out. So the first time you do this, you need to set up a password, which I'm gonna type off off screen. So you had the video recording prompt, just in case someone is hacking into your video camera on your robot. So you should be able to see a, an image of my legs and my socks, which I guess are not gonna be pleasant, I'm gonna be taking it off. But you can actually see what's going on in your home through the robot moving around. Now it's time to look at the Home Assistant integration and look at how we can then use some automations in Node-RED to take this smart device over here to the next level. 
To integrate the Ecovax Robo Vacuum into Home Assistant, you're going to need to go to the Home Assistant Community Store. Click on Integrations and click on Explore and Add Repositories. You should see something like DBOT4 for Home Assistant. If you click on the three dots, you'll get more information over here. And you can click on the documentation to find out what is compatible or not. I've been using this integration for quite a while for my previous Ecovax Robo Vacuum. So it's been working great. And soon I hope it'll also support the Omni X1. If we go to our integration page, we can see the DBOT appearing over here, one device and 23 entities. And we've got a number of things that you can actually look at like the live map, the DBOT, if it has a mop attached or not, if you have a removable version, the live span brush. So there's many sensors that you can actually utilize. Today I'm just gonna show you the actual robo vacuum itself and the information that we can use from that device. If you go to the developer tools and you look for the robo vacuum, you can see its current state. The states that I've seen mainly are docked, paused, cleaning, and returning. So these are the four status that you can use to automate things. Now the first one I'm doing today is return to base. Now the return to base is quite important. If for any reason your robo vacuum is paused, you really want it to go back to the base. And if it can't do that automatically through the app, then we can use some sort of automation. So first thing to do is to add the state nodes. The state nodes, pick your DBOT from your entity list. And then here the key is to look for the state. So I have two states that I'm looking for. One for idle, and then there's another copy, you can see over here, for pause state. And I'm looking for a certain amount of time, then it could be 10 seconds, 10 minutes, whatever really you wish. Once you've set that up, you can click done. And the great thing with Node-RED to add multiple, what that would be triggers in the Home Assistant world, you can just copy and paste and create adding on. And remember to connect them all to your core service node. The core service node over here, or uh, again, you will need to pick the vacuum and the service is returned to base. Here are some of the other services that you can actually utilize. I would uh, pay attention maybe perhaps a clean spot. Locate is more like if you've completely lost your vacuum, you don't know where it is. Pause is uh, when it's cleaning, you want to pause. Turn to base will set the return to base. You can set the fan speed and do all sorts of things automatically. The message that I'm adding at the end is a debug node sort of to help us uh, actually interpret what's going on. And we can have the complete message. Uh, I would set that as the output instead of the standard message and get that done and click deploy. The way this robo vacuum is actually designed is really, really great and looks really good. It's actually a specific designer called Jacob Jensen Design, which I was really aware of and I researched it while I was researching this robo vacuum. But the look and feel of it looks quality. It also has a voice assistant embedded in it, which you can use to command it and basically ask it to return to base and do other things. So that's also a great feature. I previously have always used voice assistants to achieve that and connect it, but it's good that it's actually built in. Now, when you introduce a new voice assistant in the area, sometimes you have fast triggers. I've had this for three weeks to a month at this point, and I think I've only had two false triggers in that whole time. So not a problem at all and really nothing really happened after that. Now the extent of what this actually can do by itself is very surprising without even needing Node Red, for example, or Home Assistant. It automatically detects when the mopping pans are dirty. So what it does is it just decides to go back to the base and clean those pans it will vocally notify you when there's a problem, which I think is really important. I would normally actually send some notifications, what I would have normally done, maybe do some text to speech or some actually notification on your phone when there's a problem. But most of the time, if you're in the same room, you can actually hear it from the vacuum itself. So it actually will tell you, please empty the uh, dirty water or fill in the tank. Now, I've never had a station before, that's also very surprising. The amount of water that this takes is quite good. I've just used normal tap water. I think you can actually purchase a special liquid or cleaning product solution. That's really up to you. You, know, you can actually see what the robot vacuum is actually doing. The actual 
uh, dust part that gets sucked out of the robot vacuum, I haven't actually even had to empty it yet. So this has been running for weeks and cleaning and I haven't had to touch it. You also have some spare pads in the middle. It might be a little bit intimidating at the beginning with the buttons and the station, but once you get your head around it, it works really well. The second automation today I'm quite passionate about. These are when other things happen in your home, actually pause your vacuum, right? And actually you can stop it from playing. Now, if you think about this, right? There are some times when whatever the noise the vacuum makes, it does make some considerable noise. So perhaps during meetings, when you're listening to your favorite music, or you're watching a TV show, or whatever you're doing, you want the vacuum just to pause, or just to stop, or return to base, if it is cleaning. So this is what I created over here. I've got a uh, state node, which is looking for the kitchen TV, which is an LG TV, and I'm looking for the state. So if it actually turns on, and it stays on for a certain threshold, let's right, say 30 seconds, then this will actually trigger the vacuum to pause. Now this is great and uh, it really means that you don't have the vacuum cleaning when you're in the U room and you're actually you know, trying to consume content, which is quite bothersome. So this is the same thing that I'm doing with the HomePod. So if I'm listening to music, this will also pause this vacuum. The other thing that surprised me is the mapping quality and how you can actually generate a 3D map from this compared to the previous D-Bot that I had, that feature wasn't there. The maps also look different between the old D-Bot that I have, had, that I bought purchased last year, and this one that I got sent recently. Uh, and it's a pity because it's act, they're actually in the same room, and I would have loved them to uh, share the same app in some sort of way. But because they are different ranges, probably different price points, uh, they're not able to really to collaborate and to understand that the map is actually the same map, but each robot so tends to generate their own map, which might be unnecessary. I would have imagined that the uh, more expensive vacuum, the uh, XI Omni, would be generating a fancier, more accurate map, and then in some sort of way sharing that with the other D-Bot. Maybe I'm asking too much, but let me know what you think about that in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel. There's no doubt that the uh, power of the suction and the cleaning quality and the mapping is on par. Now, really, it was really great with the previous Ecovacs that I already had, the D-Bot that was running and has been running in the kitchen for like a year. Probably the newer version cleans a tad better and it seems even more quieter and it just looks a bit more premium. So it's a little bit less uh, in the way when it, it roams around and actually uh, cleans things up. In practice, I'll be honest with you guys, this is a game changer because I had the mopping attachment version that you could just attach on and it would automatically mop. And maybe I used it once or twice a month because you had to get it, attach it yourself, fill it the water, remember to detach it once it's finished and, and empty any uh, water that was left in the tank to not create any lime scale deposits. However, with this rubber vacuum, it probably can clean, I would say clean every day. Now, keep an eye on the actual levels because you're going to need to fill it up. If you're having it washing, like I was doing two or three times a day, just to test it out, stress test it, you are gonna be filling up the water tank at least once every three days. So I think on a normal use, planning maybe once a week, if you're doing it once a day, it depends on the size of the room that you're actually uh, cleaning or your apartment. Two more, which are very linked to the previous episode, which was presence detection, which you haven't seen. You can jump on and see that and what I'm doing with presence detection. But over here, now the principle is we want the rubber vacuum to clean when we're not home. So we are looking at our empty home state node we're looking, at, we're asking the same questions. If the someone's home is false and no one's home, then the vacuum will start cleaning. And this is uh, great because we want to get the cleaning done when we're not in. And on the reverse side, when we actually do get back home, we want the return to base to be cooled uh, so that we don't have the vacuum in the way. Now we could just let it run its uh, course like 
most rubber vacuum will just return to base. But the idea here is that we are looking for continuous cleaning and most likely the vacuum would have finished unless I just left the home for a short period of time and come back while the cycle was running. So most of the time the back home won't actually run unless it was running already maybe for a scheduled task. You can still schedule tasks normally if you want to do that within the app. I wouldn't do that in Node Red. So anything you can do in the app, try to do in the app because it's just gonna be easier. And anything that's a little bit more advanced and you're using other sensors in your home to make decisions and to uh, command the rubber vacuum here in Node Red or Home Assistant make it great. The reason why I'm using Node Red is just because it's a little bit more visual to actually have a complete picture of what's going on for this one device that I have. And it's a premium product, but keep an eye on the link in the description down below where you can actually have a look at the current price if there are any deals running on Amazon, for example. I hope you enjoyed this episode. This is Jeff from Smart Makers. See you in the next one.